Most of us have heard about the Egyptian civilization or the Nile Valley civilization, but how much do we really know about the ancient Egypt? The past has always been fascinating yet mysterious. Well, the ancient Egyptian civilization was one of the oldest and most advanced civilizations in the world. It was based in ancient North Africa along the lower course of the Nile River in what is now the country of Egypt. Today the world knows the civilization for its pharaohs, pyramids and mummies but there are many other fascinating facts associated with ancient Egypt. Well hello and namaste and welcome to Itihas where we talk about people of the past and interesting historical facts. Do subscribe to our channel and join us in this journey as we unravel the pages of history. Today we are presenting 10 surprising facts about the Egyptian civilization that you might not have heard before. Yes. Starting at number 10 we have, not all pharaohs built pyramids. Almost all the pharaohs of the Old Kingdom and Middle Kingdom built pyramid tombs in Egypt's northern deserts. These highly conspicuous monuments linked the kings with the sun god Ra while replicating the mound of creation that emerged from the waters of chaos at the beginning of time. But by the start of the New Kingdom from 1550 BC, pyramid building was out of fashion. Kings would now build two entirely separate funerary monuments. Their mummies would be buried in hidden rock cut tombs in the Valley of Kings on the west bank of Nile at the southern city of Thebes, while a highly visible memorial temple situated on the border between the cultivable land, which was the home of the living, and the sterile desert, which was the home of the dead, would serve as the focus of the royal mortuary cult. Mortuary cult or death cult is basically a religious practice in which the dead and the deceased are remembered. In number 9 we have, they did not ride camels. The camel was not used regularly in Egypt until the very end of the dynastic age. Instead, the Egyptians used donkeys as beasts of burden and boats as a highly convenient means of transport. The river was linked to settlements, quarries, and building sites by canals, and huge wooden barges were used to transport grain and heavy stone blocks. And light papyrus boats buried people about their daily business. In number 8 we have, not everyone was mummified. The mummy which is an inviscerated, dried, and bandaged corpse has become a defining Egyptian artifact. Yet mummification was an expensive and time-consuming process and it was reserved only for the most wealthiest members of the society. The vast majority of Egypt's dead were buried in simple pits in the desert. Well, you may ask that why did the wealthiest feel the need to mummify their dead? Well, the answer to that is they believed that it was possible to live again after death. In number 7 we have, the Egyptians had a great achievement in mathematics, medicine, science, and astronomy. Some of the earliest medicinal advancements came from ancient Egypt. Surviving hieroglyphic writings detail some of the techniques and methods used in treatment of wounds and illnesses. Furthermore, some of the earliest medicinal specializations appeared in Egypt, with certain doctors focusing only on certain types of afflictions. In the pre-dynastic period in Egypt, early mathematical calculations appeared with a fully functional numerical system. Four basic mathematical operations were well known to Egyptians, which were the addition, multiplication, division, and subtraction. Alongside the basic knowledge of algebra and geometry, fractions, volume, and area calculations were also known to them. They were also aware of the Pythagoras theorem. The ancient Egyptians also invented the 365 days a year calendar to predict the yearly flooding of the Nile River. Okay, let's take a short break. So if you guys want us to make videos on topics that you are interested in, do mention those down in the comment sections below. And also, if you are interested in historical facts and figures and all these things, then do check out our videos in our channel. We have quite a bunch of those there. Anyways, moving into the next point. In number 6 we have, even by 3000 BC, the ancient Egyptians had fully mastered their shipbuilding techniques. The Egyptians used boats for sailing up and down the Nile which was an immense part of their economy and also for seafaring trade with neighboring nations. In their earliest form, these were plank ships, but they developed steadily into unique barges and transport vessels. The Egyptians had mastered the use of turnals which were wooden pegs for connections and also the use of pitch or clocking. Mortise and tenon joints were also used, showing their understanding and mastery of woodworking. 
But the most famous fully intact surviving ancient Egyptian ship is the Khufu ship, which was found sealed in the Pyramid of Giza, and it measures almost 44 meters in length. Wait, what? There's a ship inside the Pyramid of Giza that measures 44 meters in length? Well, I definitely didn't know that, did you? Do mention those down in the comments below. Anyways, in number 5 we have, the ancient Egyptians were well known for their writing system, the hieroglyphs. The hieroglyphic writings go back as far as 3000 BC, and it consisted of several hundred symbols. But did you know that the hieroglyphs were not the only form of writing in ancient Egypt? Well, they were usually only used in formal ways, such as in inscriptions on tombs and monuments. But in fact, there was a simpler script called hieratic, which was a cursive version and was used in everyday situations by priests and officials. It was much simpler and faster to write than the hieroglyphs and it was dominant roughly until 1000 BC. After that, the demotic script took over and it was perhaps because it was much more simpler than the heretic script. Okay, in number 4 we have the king of Egypt could be a woman. Wait, what? If a woman becomes the king, then who would be the queen? Well, ideally the king of Egypt could be the son of the previous king, but this was not always possible. And the coronation ceremony had the power to convert the most unlikely candidate into an unassailable king. On at least three occasions, women took the throne, ruling in their own right as female kings and using the full power of the king. The most successful of these female rulers was Hatshepsut, who ruled Egypt for more than 20 prosperous years. Well, women did have equal rights as that of men in ancient Egypt and it was a good thing for them. In number 3 we have, few Egyptian men married their sisters. Some of the Egypt's kings married their sisters or half-sisters. These incestuous marriages ensured that the queen was trained in her duties from birth and that she remained entirely loyal to her husband and their children. They provided appropriate husbands for princesses who might otherwise remain unwed while restricting the numbers of potential claimants for the throne. They even provided a link with gods, several of whom, like Isis and Orisis, enjoyed incestuous unions. However, brother-sister marriages were never compulsory and some of Egypt's most prominent queens, including Nefertiti, were of non-royal birth. But these incestuous marriages were not common outside the royal family until the very end of the dynastic age. In number 2 we have, the Great Pyramid was not built by slaves. The classical historian Herodotus believed that the Great Pyramid had been built by a hundred thousand slaves. His image of men, women and children desperately toiling in the harshest of conditions has proved remarkably popular. However, it is wrong. Archaeological evidences indicate that the Great Pyramid was in fact built by a workforce of 5,000 permanent salaried employees and up to 20,000 temporary workers. These workers were free men summoned under the Corvi system of national service to put in a three or four month shift on the building site before returning home. They were housed in a temporary camp near the pyramid where they received payments in the form of food, drinks, medicinal attention and for those who died on duty, burial in the nearby cemetery was also provided. Finally, in number one we have Cleopatra was not Egyptian. Along with King Tut, perhaps no figure is more famously associated with ancient Egypt than Cleopatra VII. But while she was born in Alexandria, Cleopatra was actually part of a long line of Greek Macedonian original descended from Ptolemy I, one of Alexander the Great's most trusted lieutenants. The Ptolemaic dynasty ruled Egypt from 323 to 30 BC, and most of its leaders remained largely Greek in their culture and sensibilities. In fact, Cleopatra was famous for being one of the first members of the Ptolemaic dynasty to actually speak the Egyptian language. Well, that is all for 10 facts about the Egyptian civilization and I hope you guys like this video. Do subscribe to our channel because we are going to post more videos on history and civilization, so stay tuned. Thank you and have a great day.